everyone. Welcome back to our podcast, No More Secrets. As always, I'm your niece, Katie Albrecht. And I'm your aunt, Mary Albrecht. Were you going to say aunt? I was thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> we it's ha- happened before. We <laughs> are so honored to have a guest on the show today named Tabitha. Tabitha, please say hello to everybody. Hello. We met, Hi, Tabitha. We met Tabitha through the book, 365 Days of Self-Love. She's holding it up right now. Good job. <laughs> and she was one of the authors. You said you wrote like six pieces for it. Is that right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we were, were able to FaceTime a while ago, and then my husband and Terry died. You guys all know his name. And so, and it was the week you were coming on that he died. So it was like, you know, I, I, and so you were so gracious. You're like, oh my God, take your time, my condolences and all of that. And so we reconnected on Thursday. Yeah. And now we're here doing our recording today. And Tabitha has quite a story. It's inspirational, befuddling. Mm. Um, oh, that was a thesaurus world. <laughs> Amazing, but also hard to deal with. And I think I want to emphasize that, that even though you have a, a great attitude, it, it, it's a hard journey for you. So anyway, why don't you just go ahead and, and start with what happened to you in 2017? Um, you, you were 29 years old and go. <laughs> oh, let's cut right into the meat and potatoes, right? <laughs> we don't um, mess around here. Yeah. <laughs> but we do mess around. But, but we do. <laughs> Good. Then I'm meant to be here because I, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh. Okay. Well, I, uh, a few weeks before I turned 29, I found out I was pregnant with my first and only child. Um, and it was smooth sailing for my first two trimesters. I was in La La Land getting ready for baby. I uh, knew I was having a little boy and all, all was beautiful. And then I hit my third trimester. And that is when I started to show some very odd um, symptoms. I started with being, uh, I was waking up with night, like um, hot flashes. Then I started having some odd rashes on my body. Then I started feeling very intense headaches. Uh, Then from there, really was struggling to breathe. And it just Hmm. seemed to, with each day, you know, yeah, I saw, okay, I'm cold. I have a cold. I have something, you know, it's pregnancy. And each day was thinking it was going to get better. It was not. It was getting worse. Um, I did have some trips to the ER and I was told, uh, you know, to, to woman up. The third trimester of a pregnancy is hard. I was told I had cat scratch fever. I was told I had walking pneumonia. Um, some odd things. Mm-hmm. Did they uh, ever do any tests during that time? They, yeah, did, they just we told did, you. We did a blood test and okay. my white blood cell count, my red, everything was off, red flags. It was, yeah, it, but you know, I was young. I, up until then, had never had a medical issue, you know, besides your little average, oh, you have strep throat or yada, yada. Yeah. And so I was not taken serious. Uh, and I also was not someone um, who was confident or comfortable enough to kind of stand my ground and say, no, I really can't breathe. Like there's mm-hmm. something wrong. This mm-hmm. is more. Yeah, you know, this is more. And um, long story short, these were the symptoms of a rare form of lymphoma cancer. Uh, the whole word is non-Hodgkin's angioimmunoblastic T cell lymphoma with B cell with large B cell components. Wow, I'm amazed that you can remember time. all that. Yeah. <laughs> that. yeah, rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> hey, uh, rolls. I, yeah, and when I was diagnosed, I was like, "Can you say that about ten more times, please?" <laughs> right. I didn't catch that. Um, and it was rare, you said, or it is rare. 
It's a very rare, um, it's, and it's a double strain of lymphoma. It's two forms of lymphoma. Oh, um, they go hand in hand. They like to, they like to come in pairs, I guess, with this rare strain. And when so, did you find that out? Five days. Is that what you were going to ask that? <laughs> oh, huh? uh, I said five days post giving birth. So, um, again, it was wow. the third trimester that these symptoms started appearing and then quickly, very quickly became very aggressive symptoms. Um, and so I went into labor a week before my due date. Um, and at that point I was unable to lay down because if I laid down, it felt like my head was going to explode. There was so much blood rushing to my head. It, or I don't know if that was the case, but that's what it felt like. Yeah. I wasn't sleeping. I was barely able to breathe. My little guy, he came just in the nick of time. I don't think I could have lasted another week. Um, wow. And yeah. Uh, and so labor began and quickly my body again it just was like this downward spiral and my body just kept going lower and lower um soon right at, pretty much right as i entered the hospital they were having to put um oxygen just a mask on me because they were oh this is kind of odd maybe they're blocking the lungs this that they noticed my lymph nodes were were completely swollen you know um but the big sign was when I was having any type of contraction, my poor little guy, his vitals would drop. His vital, and, and it was confusing. And it was, wow, is the cord wrapped around his neck? Is there this? It, and is that related to what you said about the cancer and your son fighting for the same resources? So it wasn't until, <clears throat> he was, so I ended up, they ended up having to slow my delivery down. Like so instead of induce, I had something that like slowed things because it was stressing. Um, every con contraction was stressing him out. Um, after 30 plus hours of labor, um, which is all a blur, of course. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I ended up going in for a C-section. You know, at that point, I was like, just get it out. Just get him out. <laughs> Cut me open, please. Get him out. Thirty um, hours is a long time. Oh, thirty. Yeah, it was like thirty-two or so. I, I don't even know, it, but it was it was quite a yeah. Oh. It's time to get on the table. Cut me open. Get this little baby out of me. And I wanted to just hold my little angel. Um. So that went thankfully smooth. However, it was very. Um, the hospital did notice very quickly that his blood sugar was off. It was super 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 low and again it was still this confusion i mean if i were to add a, a word to this time it's just pure confusion confusion of what's going on why is his blood sugar super low and then we started noticing he squeaked a little when he was eating because he did um oh. he squeaked. Can, you, can you mimic the squeak oh, <laughs> <laughs> i can is it like a mouse? <laughs> I can't even do it. It was like so loud and like, a, like yeah. It was a very odd. And so that was a huge sign uh, that something's going on. And 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 then my body just continuously, again, my I, at this point my oxygen levels were tanking. I was probably receiving about fifty. 40 to 50 liters of oxygen and I was still in the 80s when the oh my God. God. saturation rate yeah and that's when it went from this is odd and she might be fighting this or that like again this walking pneumonia this cat scratch fever because I had a scratch from my cat and my poor cat got a lot of blame. <laughs> and poor cat sympathy. Well, <laughs> FYI, I, I came to to learn this that a lot of lymphoma patients, younger lymphoma patients, are actually diagnosed with cat scratch fever before they're diagnosed with the lymphoma. And cat scratch fever is an ancient, ancient like virus, practically. Yes, yeah, some yeah it's not common anymore. It yeah, happens still, not. but but it's a, a song a diagnosis. Scratch fever. 
Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 so that was the dun, joke because I am a little bit of a <laughs> lady. So that was the the running joke at the time. Like, oh my god, only Tabitha. <laughs> um, Wouldn't that have been was, nice if that had been? Oh, yeah, I think that would have been never, a lot better. Yeah. I, at one point, I was praying for it, but yeah, it's not the case. Um, but yeah, so my body just started tanking, uh, and in in my oxygen saturation, that was where you saw it the most. So. Um, during this time where you were in the hospital and then your son was also in the hospital in the NICU. So you weren't even to like hold or able to hold him or anything. I was because I am a very stubborn woman and I just burst your way through the doors and (laughs) I made them bring the oxygen machine down. So my husband would roll it. My mom who, uh, is also like me and very stubborn we we made it work for us and so i i brought a a travel little oxygen machine with me down to the NICU and i would sit and hold my little guy for as long as i possibly could um profusely sweating trouble breathing and i was you know tempting but you're still a mom yeah so you want to and you still wanted to get to know your new baby after 30 hours um, plus of, of labor, you know? <laughs> I credit him for why I survived this because it was, it was animalistic. It was pure survival. It was pure, I just gave birth to this child and I have nothing else in my mind on my, like my problems could care less. Okay, I can't breathe. I don't care. Give me the baby. Like it was and- really animalistic it was very animalistic it was pure i need to take care of this child get me a travel oxygen get me this i i need to go see him um but but also it gave you drive to stay alive because you just gave birth to him and now you're gonna leave you know yeah because you were like close to death after yes it was because unfortunately after my birth again my body tanked and tanked and tanked and and then that's when the tests began. Um, I had to do an endoscopy. I had to do, my lymph nodes were super swollen. So I did a biopsy in my armpit. I did a bone marrow test, um, a million blood work test. I mean, just test after test after test, test. And that all started pretty much the second day after he was two days old. Um, and so it was, yeah, he, he he's he's the reason why I'm here. He is my ultimate motivation. He is he was a, the best distraction there ever was for something, um, you know. Because I have a lot of people ask me, "How in the world did you do what you did, just giving birth?" And I, it's like I had no time to think about what was going on. I just had to push through and live through it. And I just he was he was my my light, my star that I just kept my focus on. Oh wow, um, that's beautiful. Yeah, he, you know, it was, it was a very, very confusing, very scary five days of tests of not knowing what was going on. It was around day four, though, they had an idea. And I I got a call and it was like, please sit down for this. I'm like, well, I'm in a hospital bed. What do you think? (laughs) (laughs) You You can only roll this oxygen so far. And they told me, we're going to have an oncologist come visit you later in the evening. And, you know, we are, we're looking at a few different, you know, things that it could be, but right now a, you know, cancer is, is kind of leading the way. And I remember, I, I just was like kind of out of it at the time. I'm like, okay, okay, let's talk. All right. And my mom, I think my my mom got mad. I remember she was mad because she's like, how dare they even suggest something so crazy. And so, you know, just to add more stress, just going into, you know, just like I was going into mama bear mode. My mom was right there going into mama bear. Mama bear. Yeah. My husband was just holding down the fort being that, that very grounding force that I needed. Um, I've I've always called him my rock and he a hundred percent, was and still is my rock in that moment um and he was the one who was manning most of the the child care like 
he learned how to change not a diaper but an infant diaper right there and it was kind of funny because if that wasn't how things how un, how you know they didn't unravel that way i would have been like let me i got the diapers i got the this i got it very much yeah. my personality at the time did and he have to go to work during that time or did he take some no, time off thank goodness he had paternity leave Oh, God. Um, and then yeah. he ended up actually taking um, more family leave, and he works um, for the a local electrician union here in San Francisco, and they were amazing. They were beyond beyond generous in um, giving us time and giving him, you know, the time he needed to be with his family. So he took quite a bit of work off in general. Um, great. For Good years to hear about years. companies like that. <laughs> it I is, yeah. too often about it. And I mean, they sent us diapers. They sent us wipes. It was, they were really, they were a very big part of uh, relieving a little bit of stress, if you will. So how long were you ultimately in the hospital? You slash mm-hmm. your newborn? So five days post birth, I was given the diagnosis um, which was almost a relief at that point because it was like, okay, at least this end, the the hyper confusion uh-huh. would be put to rest a little bit. And and again, a little bit about my personality. It's like, okay, now I know what I'm up against. What are the steps I need to do to get over this? You know, and I and I said from day one, cancer had the wrong bitch, wrong. Bitch. <laughs> That I could be won. the name of a book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do like that. Yeah, the, the wrong, wrong one because I was I was it's not going to bitch to leech off of cancer. <laughs> not today, fucker. Not today, not today. <laughs> um, but I ended up uh, beginning uh, my first round of what would have been six rounds of I like to call it kitchen sink chemo because <laughs> I was given. Um, quite a bit more than the average person. I I was stage four at this part, this point when it was. There were tumors all over your body, right? Yeah, so I did have tumors. So the tumors, you know, part of uh, the reason why I couldn't lay down because I had tumors in my sinuses. And so super pressured. I had tumors in my lungs. I had tumors in my armpit areas. I had tumors throughout my entire body. Um, And I was unable to breathe. And I, without the oxygen being pumped full force um, and still my vitals tanking and whatnot. So I was stage four. I knew things were bad. I did not know they were like, wow, you're like on knocking on doors death bad until I got Mm. out of the hospital, which was, I was in there for a total of about two weeks, Mm. two and a half weeks. Um, and yeah, it, 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 I, I began my chemo there. I did more and more and more tests. I had to get, you know, I had to prep for the chemo. So I had to get a pick line installed in my arm and a whole bunch of things within these two weeks. I had multiple surgeries, including giving birth in the C-section. All in- Yeah, that is another surgery. And did they take tumors out? Is that why you had surgeries? No. Well, they did take one um, lymph node out to do a biopsy. They can um, do that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they could take I've out your few, lymph nodes. Unfortunately, but I've had a few. I've had a biopsy here, here. It's Everyone calls it my hickey, but it's not a hickey. <laughs> it's uh-huh. a scar. <laughs> and in my armpit. <laughs> You have lymph nodes all over your body, the majority of them in your head and neck and clavicle area. Yeah, I always think of them like right here and then under the armpit. Like yeah, in your you have them in your groin, your groin area. You oh. Have, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They are a vital <laughs> part of You're your- You're giving us a biology lesson at the same time. I love it. <laughs> that part of my healing journey right there is learning a lot about the lymph system and, and, and that, but we'll get to that later. Okay. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, I, it was- it was a two weeks. It, it, it was a hellish two weeks. And although I was going through quite a bit of tests and 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 surgeries, such as an endoscopy and, and whatnot that were pr- brutal, <laughs> um, 
again, it, my main motivation was I wanted to get out of the hospital so I could be home with my little guy. And my little guy was with my parents, actually, as well as it was a beautiful when he, moment. Hmm? When did he get out of the NICU? He was out of the NICU. So we kind of prolonged his stay there a little bit. Like we dragged out the um, circumcision procedure with him. And like we really, we prolonged it because I was able to see him when he was in the oh, NICU. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so he stayed in there for about a week. But we probably he probably could have got out a little earlier. Thankfully, his he is a very healthy little boy right now, and he did recover. He's my strong little fighter boy, and he recovered pretty briefly as Does well. Does he squeak? He no longer <laughs> squeaks. Thank God, he lost that around. He squeaked up until about eight months, though. He squeaked wow. heavily until about six months, and then about eight months is when it it really started to to fade. His trachea bit. wasn't developed. Is that correct? Developed, which is typical in a preemie, I guess, because um, it's one of the the final things to develop in a okay. child in a fetus. And obviously he was not a preemie. He was a week early. He was, you so know, I was gonna say, that didn't sound like it was fully premature, but. But he was unable to fully continue to develop because he and the cancer were both taking from my body. You know, uh, building a baby is they're taking all the energy and resources from 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 their mom. Um and uh, this is a little side note, but do you get like extra hungry and then like give in to those cravings when you're pregnant? <laughs> I mean, that's the best part of being pregnant. Hello. You get the excuse of eating like burgers, <laughs> oh, you whatever know, you want, you know. My my first trimester and, and second trimester, I was pretty well behaved. And then my third trimester on top of being sick and this yeah, and that. The girls gotta eat. Girl, yeah. got, you know what? I'm craving Taco Bell. Go get me some Taco Bell. Oh my gosh. Have we talked about this? Taco I love Taco Bell. Bell. <laughs> that that was my number one craving. And like I said, my first I two love Taco was, Bell. I was pretty good. I, I did not go into all the craving. Yeah, but but it sounds like in yeah. general that's the trend with most people I know. The third right. time I see you're like, I'm huge, I'm miserable. Just give it to me, please. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Gain weight? You know? Right. <laughs> Gets going bloated. to the it's for the baby. <laughs> Right. You're eating for two. <laughs> right. So how long? Um, so you were out and then what was your treatment? What did that look like after you were out of the hospital originally? So I um, my first round of chemo was done in the hospital as an inpatient. Um, my remaining five rounds of chemo um, was then done um, as an outpatient. So I would go to a chemo lounge uh oh, it sounds so dreamy <laughs> oh yes i well i would well i would pop an edible and then i would go and then i would be enjoying <laughs> myself and i would call it the chemo lounge and and yeah it's you know it's a sad place because you're all there getting your chemo but it's also a very hopeful place um and so i would do my best to go with a hopeful spirit and and just knowing that I was there to get better. Um, my chemo, what it was called was REPOC. So I had six drugs per chemo round and they were heavy duty drugs. One of the drugs themselves is a chemo treatment all in itself. <laughs> and I had five additional ones on top of that. Um, so these wow. rounds were no joke. And wow. it was my husband who would go with me I obviously couldn't drive, you know, back and I lost my hair. I lost my eyebrows. I lost all the things. That beautiful hair and those eyebrows. Those beautiful eyebrows. <laughs> exactly. We were just talking about this before we were recording that you are blessed with having to get I, rid of eyebrows instead of putting them on. I, I tr well, I've always, I've always been, you know, a fan of the eyebrows. Let's, I grew up with a very thick unibrow. Okay. So then, you know, I, I had to get that trimmed and, and then losing my eyebrows. I am very, very grateful to have 
the hair on my my head and my face that I do. I'm even happy to have armpit hair these days too. I'm like, okay, right. yeah, I get to shave again. Woo-hoo. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so I, the, the kitchen sink term, that's what they said for my husband is that they throw everything at you but the kitchen sink. Yep. Yeah, and so that's basically what they did with you is just give you every kind of poison that they could poison to kill poison yeah and that's how i viewed it so were you really sick during all that like the afterwards Yeah. yeah you know i uh i did my best to be present when i could be present and be and thankfully i was you know my little guy was at the point where all you could do is lay in bed with them you know they're just little they're just laying there and whatnot so i did get a lot of one-on-one time with him but it was me in bed and him in bed with me and and i again I just go to my village that stepped up. It was not only my parents, not only my husband, but my in-laws, my friends, my grandparents. Uh-huh. Um, and it really was a village helping me out, you know, where my mother-in-law would run to the grocery store for me and my mom stayed the night so Jim could get some good sleep because he's taking care of me essentially. and. And so my mom would stay the night and wake up with Mason and he was obviously bottle fed at this point because nobody wants chemo breast milk right. <laughs> and whatnot. It doesn't sound like a good cocktail, no. <laughs> you're a little, you're a little toxic. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was about a four month period where I was doing um, these big old chemo rounds and then I would have about two weeks in between and then I would go into the next round um yeah and, the, and by the end they yeah it was it was kicking my butt um i do bring up the edible because that actually was a huge part of how i survived the chemo it was great in um helping me eat anything uh-huh. uh, you know and that's a lot of people um they they lack nutrition and they 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 are unable to refuel their body during chemo and it's it's a huge crucial part to make sure you're able to eat and it also helped with my sanity so instead of the pharmacy of pain pills and this and that that was offered to me i i really did stay as holistic as possible because if i took a heavy duty painkiller i wasn't present for my son you know if i took a a, a, a little a low dose edible i was able to be present for my son and it did help with the pain so i think that's pretty common with case with cancer um, yeah people, I like to always, it's prescribed to it and everything yeah I, I like to always bring it up because um you know I know I have this one experience where an older woman approached me on you know how where do I get them I'm like well they're legal here in California you can go down this block that block da, da, da. And, and she was really she wanted to try it but she was really nervous you know it's it has that taboo of air to it a little bit sometimes and and so i ended up bringing her a little goodie basket one one chemo lounge day and whatnot and but i always like to just share that it was it was the right decision for me and it can be for a lot of other people too that's what travis said too so our producer that you just met you know he was on our show because he had testicular cancer at age 26 i think and the edibles is what kept his weight up because yeah. he could eat otherwise no way no you know way. what kept him strong and then terry did my husband did the same yeah. and if he was not able to eat then he would do edibles so that yeah. he would get the munchies and he'd be down at two mm-hmm. in the morning three in the morning crunch 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 <laughs> <laughs> before he was so sick but yeah so they they work and there's nothing wrong with it and that's why it's legal and that's why it's actually a prescription too yeah yep it was yeah for, it for was. medical yeah but that was a huge part um and then again the village and just my community rose around me as well i live in a small a um, little beach town here near San Francisco. And, you know, in my darkest of times, I saw some true beauty and some true light and miracles. And it just was in, you know, seeing how many people do care um, about me, mm-hmm. <laughs> believe it or not. Okay. You know, yeah. and it was, it was, it was a lot of love and so much motivation um, to keep, 
keep strong and to keep pushing through. That's and nice. yeah, so and then, that but that wasn't the end of it. Yeah, I wish I could end there. That's okay, the end. <laughs> I wish, I wish okay. I could end there. Book two, here we go. Um, okay. On to the next chapter. <laughs> turn the book or turn the page. Um, <laughs> So uh, I then was given about a month or so off of any chemo, started to find some strength in my my bones a little bit again, um, got to be a maid of honor for my, my cousin in my cousin's wedding here in San Francisco and really got to soak in that month. Um, but then I began the long process of preparing for a autologous stem cell bone marrow transplant. Um, because lymphoma is a blood cancer, it has a very high relapse rate. In fact, the relapse rate of the in lymphoma that was that I was diagnosed with, diagnosed with, um, had without the bone marrow transplant an 80% relapse rate. Wow. Bone marrow transplant and knocked it down to 40%. So at the time, the the rewards outweighed the risks. Um, and the bone marrow transplant was no joke. <laughs> I like to say that. It was oh. another two months or so of extremely intense chemo, some of it inpatient, some of it outpatient. I like to always... I have a dark humor thanks to all of this, but I always laugh at like when I was getting my inpatient chemo that's in the hospital, that's what that means. And just to like hang up the IV bags that were going through me, the per the the nurses would have to dress up in like, you know, that the PP gear, the PPE gear, head to toe, mask, oh. you know, gloves just to hold the bag that they were pumping through me. That's how poisonous <laughs> wow. it was. Oh my God. My husband had to, he had to go sit outside the room while they hooked it all up and then he could come in the room. It was such a trip because it's like. That's wild. So it was to protect them, not to protect or like to contaminate what was going in. No, it was, it was to protect them. It was, wow. and then here I am. Come on, yeah. give it to me. Yeah, <laughs> injecting it into your veins. Yeah. Yeah. But yet Lots you don't even want to touch to, it uh, with uh, your finger. So, yeah, I, I had a, um, of course. I, so to begin the process, I had to go through surgery again. I had to get a, it's called a Hickman catheter that was sticking out of my chest. And, oh, that was real fun to have a, a five month old with something they could grab onto. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, had to always make sure that was covered and this and that, but um, began that process and it was, uh, yeah, about two months of inpatient, outpatient chemo. And then the ultimate, you know, the, 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 the final final was a, for me, it's more, it, it was, it's the typical person. It's a four week stay, but again, something about that. I need to get home for my little boy. My stay was a little shorter. I, I, I hit my marks a little earlier and I was in there for about a three week stay. But this one was three weeks isolated. My mom was the only one who really could visit me. We snuck my husband and son in for one visit and I had one friend visit me um, as well. And oh, for three it weeks. was Ugh. mass. I had, you know, I should show you that. I think I still have it, but like this crazy intense mask I had to wear and just, and they had to wear masks just to be in the room with me. And oh yeah, it was not fun. It was, those three weeks were some of the hardest three weeks yeah, I've, I've had to, I think emotionally and mentally go through. Um, Cause it was just, me and my thoughts yeah. <laughs> me uh. in my room and um you know and then missing out on three weeks of my my six month old and you know of course he got his first fever his first flipping cold while I was in there I'm just like really all right <laughs> like, you know and uh. well so it was a tough time however it was also again a beautiful time because it was a time of hope and it was a time of I'm going through this for a reason. I'm going through this for a reason. 
and and I in in general I kept my spirits. It, there was some crash days, without a doubt. It was extremely painful. It was extremely tough. Um, but I was at Stanford Hospital, and they they did it. They did a really good job of keeping me motivated. And it was two days before no. One day, one day before Thanksgiving that I got out and I got to celebrate Thanksgiving. Um, very different than, you know, typical, but I got to celebrate it with my family, my my immediate family. And they came over and they brought me some food and I got to be home for Thanksgiving. So it was a beautiful. When, when was your son born? So it was six months son? earlier. So my son was born uh, May 4th. Uh, May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. And it was, and it is with this little guy. I'll tell you that. (laughs) My best friend is, uh, her birthday's on May 4th and she doesn't watch Star Wars. So it's kind of funny. I I text her every single- We're kind of guilty of that. (laughs) Yeah. I text her every single time, like, may the 4th be with you. And she's like, like, I don't care. (laughs) I had a good friend who, her daughter was born on May 1st and her and her husband- are huge star wars fans and they were hoping like come on may 4th may, and you know a few days early and then joke is here my son my husband and i were kind of like yeah we've watched star wars here and there oh, yeah, yeah. You get <laughs> maybe he'll watch it someday um, yes, this, is, yes. this is a side note but um we're me and my fiance are into star wars and um his last name is forsyth so we're I'm doing a wedding ha- hashtag saying, may the Forsyth be with you. I love that. I Which, love that. I thought it was like kind of sickly cute, but also funny. So, well, you know. that's, this is the year for all the sickly cute, honey. This yeah. is the year. Engagement <laughs> time. You do all the like, oh my I God. to do all the things. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You get to be a girl. Yes. I know. Get my nails done. Get my hair did. You know, hair all did. That. Got your hair did. <laughs> didn't, didn't learn how to it's talk so yet, but yeah. okay. It's a, all the all the all the spotlight is on you two and your love. It's so soak it up and totally revel in all the cuteness. Mary's you, not gonna like that. I thought she meant us two. <laughs> Nope. Then I realized, nope. Yeah, I was like, Mary's not going to like that. <laughs> um, uh, that's right. funny, though. So anyway, um, so anyway, um, you, um, were you, did you have a period of time when you were considered cancer-free? I did. I did. I had, so post-transplant, I went from... I I got to go home and then I went into another form of isolation. So although I had family over FYI, I was not allowed to have my windows open. I had to wear this crazy mask while they were around me. I was hyper isolated um, pretty much through the winter. And so I got to December, February, uh, or December, January, February. There you go. There's my months. And it was, I think, the very beginning of March, I had a PET CT scan and it did come back clear. Hallelujah. Things are golden. What year was that? That was the beginning of 2018. Okay. So now we're, yeah, we're all the shit hit the fan in the spring of 2017. And then it started to, to slow and calm by the, yeah, I guess again, a little, you know, the late winter, early spring of 2018. And then what happened after that? Because I, okay, well, well, book three. <laughs> yeah, because I know that it's not, still not the end of the story, right? Chapter 29. <laughs> so then, uh, then I realized I had a lot of healing to do, um, not just physically. And I did begin my my journey of, of, of healing and caring for my emotional and mental self. Um, and that began, things were going well. And then it was around the late spring where I felt this odd little bump in the back of my neck head area and the second i felt it i knew i knew something was wrong Ugh. and 
kind of tried to ignore it for a hot minute. All right. <laughs> it's going to go away. It's totally going to go away. Um, it did not. And it was the summer of 2018 where we discovered I had relapsed through PET CT scans and biopsies. And I had relapsed with the same double strain rare form of lymphoma. Ugh. You must, have just, you must have just been so crushed. I crash. Yeah. I I I think um I I I look at the Tabitha of 2017 and I'm like, who the F was that girl? She was so positive, she was so headstrong, she was I did not I did not take a moment to cry. I, I and then it all, it all came crashing down in that moment. It was everyone. probably from the last time around and this time all combined into one because you didn't let it out the first time or something. I just, I do have a memory of just falling to the ground, my knees giving out and just falling to the ground. Um, in tears and frustration and anger Mm -hmm. so angry I was so angry and and it was kind of the first time I did that why me yeah okay the whole 2017 I really you know you hear of horrific stories left and right your producer you just shared you're you know as someone up my my street right now going through her battle and you hear of these horrific stories so I did really hold this you know, why not me? Why okay. not me? Because it, like I, this is my mountain. I'm climbing through it. But when I got hit with that relapse, I, it, it was like, what the fuck? I I'm just, sorry. There's no other way to say that. I never <laughs> swear here. Yeah, swear it was a fucker. Yeah. What the yeah fuck? There, you go. there was a no, no other. You. <laughs> and it really, mm, it, I just, I taint. And went into a depression without okay. a doctor. All right. And, and my doctors recognized that. They recognized that. And, you know, I had actually in August, so July is when it all, oh my gosh, we're having it. But in August, I had a um, vacation to Hawaii planned. Oh, I was just going to ask you that because I knew it was, you had a trip of some sort. Yeah. At the end of my and so <laughs> it was something. I had been looking forward to, it was, I was finally strong and healthy enough and this and that, you know, and then this relapse. And and so I told my, I basically pleaded with my doctors and I said, look, I know you want to start chemo. I know you want to start, I know you want to go to another, and I mean, what else can you flip and throw at me? But they were trying to, you know, okay, let's do more. And I said, I can't, I need, I literally will, I will break. I will break and I need this vacation. And so with their blessings, you know, I, I went on this vacation, but I had, I think it was two weeks from returning. I had a, you know, a surgery scheduled to get a port put in. I had a chemo start date. I had, I had already met with the social worker again. I had, everything was already planned out. I was just to go on this vacation, come back and get back to business. Well, I went on this vacation and it was the first time that I allowed myself to be within my emotions, um, to honor them. I think I grew up as a very sensitive child, very sensitive, very, um, yeah, sensitive to emotions, but also sensitive to my surroundings and the energy and whatnot. Um, but I was taught along the lines that that was not okay. I was taught that. Mm. Suck you know, it up, buttercup. Yeah, suck it up, buttercup. Sensitivity is a sign of weakness. It's something to laugh at. It's something not to to uphold as, as, a, as valuable. Um, so over my years of growing, I I developed a very thick and heavy wall with emotions. And so this was a pretty big trip where 
there wasn't, you know, we weren't sightseeing. We weren't this and that. It was lounging at beaches, lounging at pools. It was rest. It was quiet. And I, a few weeks before, you know, I'd been working with some therapists at this point and, and I happened to run into this tarot class and I have no clue what drove me. I'm going to call it my intuition, my gut. But I said, you know, I just want to play around. And I took the class. I met with the teacher, teachers who are actually two wonderful mentors of mine right now that I still work with uh, all the time. And I began to understand that my sensitive, my sensitivity was a gift and got to start embracing it. And that means allowing myself to have a cry, allowing myself to, to be vulnerable and to show that vulnerability. And that all seemed to come together a little bit in Hawaii, you know, call it the magic of Hawaii. (laughs) And, um, I bring up the tarot because I had a very powerful moment with the tarot where I was asking, I view the tarot as communication between um, me and my divine, uh, communication with God, whoever your God is, your universe. Um, And I always just ask for guidance, guidance. And I had guidance in, you know, what should I be doing? And I pulled a card that is just, one of the most positive cards of the deck. It's called the sun card. And it is a card of good health is coming to you. Enjoy your success. Embrace the light. The light is shining on you. You are protected. All the things that I wanted to hear, yet I was confused as hell as why am I pulling this card? Yeah. And, you know, went along, enjoyed the vacation. By the time that I got back from the vacation, the symptoms that were present during this relapse were fading. I had swollen lymph nodes. They were now not swollen. I had fatigue. The fatigue had mellowed. I'm always going to have fatigue thanks to the bone marrow transplant. I I will always be. I have the immune system of a toddler and the blood of an 80 year old woman. So I'm always going to be tired. Is that what (laughs) happens? Yeah. With, uh, with, yeah, you, you, so a bone marrow transplant, they, eradicate your immune system um, to the point where you're on death's doorstep, word for word from the doctor, by the way. Mm -hmm. And then they save you from death's doorstep by um, infusing, for me, it was my own stem cells. My, um, I had a, I did not have to have donor stem cells. It was my own stem cells that they had collected. And those stem cells regrow your immune system as well as your blood. So your blood and your immune system, both of them are eradicated. Oh my God. And so my blood work looks similar to that of an older woman hormonally and that of someone probably near their fifties. Um, and, uh, immune system wise, it's completely rebuilt to, I have the same immune system that my, my son basically has. So that's all with the bone marrow. Wow. <laughs> but, um, can you explain what tarot is? Yeah, so okay, we got props. <laughs> so, might as well bring these out. So, the tarot is a playing deck of cards. Okay. You know, with uh, different, each card symbolizing a whole host of things. Um, but for me, how I use them and when I work one on one with people is they help uh, fine tune my intuition and fine tune. Um, OK, how do I explain this? So, again, I view the cr- the trow as they are feeling and reading the energy that you are holding. And when you are asking for guidance, it reflects the energy that you are holding and what energy is needed in order to have the outcome that you would like. I do not view the tarot as like this, oh, you're it's the death card, you're dying tomorrow, oh my God, da, da, da. it's not, that's that's TV shit, that's, no. That's, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, how they really are is it's, they're a huge part of my, my healing journey because they have helped me go within and do the self-discovery. Um, and that's how I use them with uh, my clients, helping them kind of break down their own energy. 
uh, and asking for guidance. And I really just like to break it down to it is a way of communicating with your with your universe, with your God, with your angels, with your ancestors, whomever you connect with, so your, your, your oh, loved one. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. How do you think it helped with um, your symptoms that you were showing of your relapse? For me, I think it gave me... So I had, when I pulled the sun card, I had already started feeling my lymph nodes de-swell, you know? Mm -hmm. And for me, how I've used these cards more than anything is it usually is just a confirmation of what I've already know, what we already know in our gut, in our intuition. It's just, it's more of, it's a confirmation more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um, But it does help. It does help me look at things from a different angle sometimes, you know, where I might be thinking one way about a situation and then I pull a card and I'm like, hmm, why did I pull that card? That's interesting. And then I kind of start looking, maybe journaling, whatnot. And it comes to light of like, "Mm, my goodness, okay, that I need to think about it from this side or this angle. And yeah, I've just had some very um, hard messages of like, girl, get you you know you're the one you know you are responsible for this you are the and i've had some very inspiring messages i i just feel like the cards are always on point and um hmm. to this day i've never worked with anyone who they haven't <laughs> been on point um so they were a huge part in i think understanding what intuition is and how i feel it and and how it lives within me So So you came back from Hawaii completely with a different mindset in terms of your your disease, correct? I came back from Hawaii with the mindset of I the mindset of my body is has the capability to heal. Because I had been feeling that beforehand, you know. But I just, I don't know, I didn't believe it. And then finding such peace, finding the ability to let go of emotions at that time and 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 just working with the tarot, working with mother nature, working with, you know, getting good rest and whatnot. I just had this like aha moment of maybe there's another way. Your body is showing progress right. in healing And I don't have chemo running through. And I'm not here to knock chemo because guess what? Chemo has saved my life. Mm -hmm. Chemo Mm -hmm. saved my life. But I'm here to say maybe it's not the only answer. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think, the big aha moment that I had. And, of course, I reached out to my doctors and I'm like, hey, guys, things are shrinking. I'm feeling better. You know, at first my doctors are like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you guys do scans or something and it proves it, right? Exactly, exactly. Wow. They did. And were they like at, flabbergasted or like what? How did they? they so they react? call it spontaneous. They call it spontaneous regression. Now, not to you know, I had had a scan and it showed things were almost next to perfect. There was still some little areas that were a little, you know, okay, we're going to give the pet CT scan. You can see everything, but it was almost next to perfect. And they're like, okay, we don't know this. We're going to call this spontaneous regression. We don't know exactly what's going on, but Hey, let's put things on pause. Cause I told them, I'm like, I'm not going to do I'm not going to do more chemo after I just did a whole year of chemo and this and that. And I possibly have some hope. I, yeah. And I just, something that was screaming from within was give your body time. Give your body time. Your body oh. just went through. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> little one. Good, good, good Lord. He got his <laughs> paw stuck or something. Oh, scared oh, the no. shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was give my body time and... And that's what it needed. Don't jump, don't jump, don't, 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 you know, like, yeah, don't jump. jump. Yeah. Like, like, and, and so that's actually my, my doctors agreed. They said, okay, you're right. Time is on your side. 
you don't want to jump right into it. We're going to respect your decision and we're, we're here to work with you. And they've always been with me side by side. Um, but yeah, and, and you know, and they told me like, don't get your hopes up high because, you know, we'll, we'll see what's going on. But all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would like to say again, that's where my book ends, <laughs> where my journey book ends. Four. Chapter book 122. Out of 120 million books. <laughs> um, but actually, that was just the beginning um, to understanding this diagnosis and how it is functioning within my body. Um, it was so many months after that I was given the spontaneous regression, fuck yeah, to what's going on. There's more, there's now I'm having another swell up. I'm having another this. I go, I do the tests, I did the biopsy. It's cancer, da da da. Okay, ready to sign up for more. And then, sure enough, as I'm ready to get going with more of it, things started to decrease again. Symptoms started to fade again. And the doctors again are like, okay, like this is not typical. But again, it is a very rare cancer. So there's there's limited research on it. I'm guinea pig probably number one right now for them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but typically this, this strain of cancer operates very aggressively how it did in um 2000 spring of 2017 all of a sudden your your symptoms yeah. you're going you're boom and it's taking you out that is typically how it is understood to operate um with me i don't know i'm a unique case from day one i've been unique <laughs> so you know and i would say it was 2000 the summer of 2018 up until pretty much the summer of 2020 that I was in this continuous what the heck is going on? It flares up, it flares down. It flares up, it flares down. And each time, right as I'm about to make moves, it would go into a waning phase. And... I'm still figuring out the balance, the alchemy, the formula that creates this beautiful miracle. Um, and I, 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 I'm making, you know, I'm making some headway there. Like I said, I, I do focus a lot on lymph, uh, lymph flow and lymph, lymph system health. And I focus a lot on my own healing journey and, and, and the many pillars of that and, and good habits, et cetera, et cetera. But there is something, there is definitely a magic to it as well. Um, but it was around summer of 2020 that we came to the conclusion, my doctors and I, that this is more of a maintenance style diagnosis I, at this point. And it is within my system, but my body, my this body of miracles, all our bodies of miracles has the ability to check to check this this cancer, check the disease. Um, again, told you from day one, eh? Right, yeah. Wrong bitch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wrong bitch. <laughs> and um, and so I like. I am I'm a I'm a Virgo, if anyone does the astrology at all. And Virgos, <laughs> you know, Virgo. we like we like our black or white. We like oh, our okay. yes or no. We like things organized. We like and the whole time, this 2018 to 2020 period, this whole time I've been seeking my yes or my no. Yes, you're in the clear. No, you're not in the clear. We need it. And it was around the summer of 2020 as well as you know, going through the pandemic, having to go within yet again and whatnot. Um, I realized that I need to play in the gray area right now. I need to play within the gray area and I need to get comfortable and accept the gray area because that's just where I'm at right now. 
Um, hmm. And I started to come to terms with this idea of, is it forever out of my system? I don't think so. Yeah. If I'm being 100% honest, I don't yeah. think so. Will it ever be 100% out of my system? Probably. Again, my gut says no. Does it this make you sick? Mm-hmm. Does, do you Take have you. days when you're like in pain oh. and... Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. When these lymph nodes swell up, they don't just swell up. They're extremely painful. Um, I call them crash days and they feel like I have the worst of the flu, like the worst flu possible. Okay. Um, it's also, you know, I go into a depression, d- depressive mode if I'm being honest, yeah. you know? Yes, I, I am very keen on mind over matter and having faith that I will be um, fine. My fine may look differently than what I would like it to look, but I have faith. I have hope. I, I have a very positive outlook, but that does not mean I'm positive 24 seven. I wouldn't be human if uh, that was the case. That's important. Um, and I also, that's, I, I, I've heard this term and I love it. It's called spiritual bypassing, you know, this brush it under the rug. It's okay. Everything's okay. I was like, yeah, it's okay. Brush it under the rug. Meanwhile, the rug's <laughs> getting taller and taller and taller and taller. Yeah. Meanwhile, you it know, you can't remember my thought. Yeah. What's so the- spiritual bypassing. Um, bypassing. Okay. Yeah. I, in 2017, I will say it's what I needed. I needed that. It's okay. I'm going to get through it yeah. kind of thing. It, it was 2018 yeah. that I realized I needed to to heal within. And I didn't even know that was a thing. I literally didn't even know that was a thing. What? Inner child? work trauma what what i didn't even oh i got a had no clue and i had begun that process again right around 2018 but it was the summer of 2020 after i came to terms with this this is probably something that i will forever be managing um i came to and i came to terms with that and it was like okay if this is what my mountain is how can I empower myself to make sure that the, the, these flare ups never get out of control and I'm able to get them. I'm able to have, I don't know. I am able to have control, but I'm not able to have control. But how, what, how can I better, you know, set myself up? How can I empower my health? How can I empower my immune system? How can I empower my body my give my body the power um Um, mary wrote a quote on here on this outline saying uh, it was a quote from you um if you if you don't make time for yourself you'll eventually make time you'll have to make time for your disease i think that's kind of like what you're talking about right right now right you got to make time to take care of yourself emotionally physically spiritually to get yourself in the, the best position possible for when disease comes a hundred, a hundred percent for anybody. Right? Uh, for anybody. I can relate to that. I mean, not with cancer specifically, but if I don't manage my stress levels, I can yeah. get very, like very sick from even just yeah. colds. And I, uh, our body talks to us. Our body talks to us through pain. Our body talks to us through illness. Our body talks to us through emotions. It's just, we are so we are taught to ignore all of yeah. that. Yeah. We're taught to ignore it, to push it off to the side. And that if we take time for the self, especially as a mother, I've seen this within the mother community to the point where it just ugh, drives me nuts. Like as a mother, I'm supposed to have no individuality. <laughs> I'm supposed to be nothing but a mom. And I'm supposed to my hair is supposed to be here and I'm supposed to be running around and, and take care and of the house like, and your kids and everything, you know, and your and job if you have norm. one. Yeah. That is the norm in our society to put ourselves, especially as women as well, to women and mothers, but like we're the bottom of the bottom of our totem pole of priorities. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was so sipping the Kool-Aid on that. I was <laughs> sipping the Kool-Aid on that all my 20s, all like, 
I nap. Who the hell takes a nap? Lazy asses take a nap. That was my attitude before going through this. So I like to think that, you know, I was given this mountain because I needed a full turnaround. Mm -hmm. God knew. "Mm, No, she has too much to offer, but you're never going to be able to offer it because you're I'm so busy within the doing of life, within the doing. I love that. And guess what? I was on that those beds <laughs> for weeks on end. I never thought about a fucking to-do list. Never thought about that. I thought about wanting to be present for my life, for my son, for my husband, for my family. That's important. I never thought about wow. something. That's a, that's, that's a beautiful message. Um, Cause you, you said that when your life gets out of balance, the disease flares up and vice versa. You know, and I can't always pinpoint it, you know, and yes, I came to these aha moments of I need healthier habits. I need this and that. Did I just like overnight click into those? No. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> I, yeah. you know, it's, it's a learning process. I These unhealthier habits I've had, you know, and whatever they may be for every person, we've had them our entire lifetime and they actually do serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. There is such a thing as coping. And sometimes we do need to cope. Humans need to be held a little bit and we need to hold ourselves. And if for me, (laughs) humans need Taco Bell. (laughs) You need to cope and eat some Taco Bell and watch a a Netflix show and and not do shit and not feel guilty about it. Right. You know, that but also, you know, part of the healing is 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 resting, is eating, you know, nutrient dense, is moving the body, is taking time for the self, and not just, ooh, I went and got my nails done. Now that drives me nuts when I see. You. I did just get my nails done. <laughs> Self-care done. I mean, that's get your nails done. Oh, I can like get my nails done too. Yes. But it drives me nuts when I hear that self care Monday. You know, I did my nails. Not and just like, that, right? Right. Yeah. You got to do more than that. You physical. You did a physical form of self care. Yeah. You do any emotional. You say self-care. it's mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual, right? So I call that my four pillars of of the whole self. Okay. The four pillars of self. Four pillars of healing. You need to heal and honor your mental self your physical self, your emotional self, and your spiritual self. Hmm. All of them are crucial and all of them have different ways of being honored. And, and, and especially to each person, it's very unique to each person, but I had no concept of that. My idea of self-care was I got to lose weight. I got to lose weight. If I lose weight, everything's going to be okay. I relapsed when I was at the lightest I've ever been in my adult life. Wow. I relapsed when I was, girl, I was feeling it. I'm like, ooh, look at that, da, da, da. I was, and, but, so it doesn't, yes, I was, I was working out. I was physically on point, but I was completely, completely suppressing all my emotions. Mentally, I was insane. Yeah. <laughs> like PTSD, this, that, everything. And that's interesting. It's like you're prioritizing your physical health, but then like everything else just went by the wayside and was gone, you know? I would say traditionally most in our society, they when they think of health, they oh. purely think of the physical health. But the physical health and the emotional health, the mental health and the spiritual health, it's, it's all wrapped up. It's a beautiful braid. Yeah. And... Um, you can't have one without the other. And that was a, a learning lesson for for me. And I'm still in that lesson and I'm still learning. Um Do you do you ever get scared? Oh, of course. Okay. Of your Last disease. Spring, my armpit blew up and I barely could move my arm and I was terrified and but I I ground in and I did a lot of, I I like to work with energy. I'm a Reiki practitioner as well as a Tarot spiritualist. Um, And I did a lot of energetic work, a lot of work with my chakras and that helped calm the fear. I've also done some ayahuasca retreats and that was the most healing and releasing of 
fear and bitterness and emotions ever. Ayahuasca. That sounds oh, yeah. that's a, oh girl, that's a whole nother chapter. That's a whole nother book. <laughs> <laughs> chapter five. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I just bring that up because my way of healing may be very unique to someone, but like everyone, they all have, every person has their own way of healing. You know, my, like my husband, he loves hiking and pushing himself mm -hmm. during the hikes. And that's his, like, that's his way of getting, uh, you know, tension out and stress out and whatnot. For me, I like a luxury hike. I like a nice slow hike. This and that. I'm taking in the birds and the this, but I'm not, but that's him. You know, that's his, that's his, his way. His way. So the part of it is getting to know what you need in order to um, lift yourself up and because everybody's different i think that's been i think that's what the pandemic gave me time for a lot of the pandemic that. gave yeah. me time for that where you know we had to slow down we had no choice mm -hmm. but to slow down we had no choice but to really go in and i like to say if you have not grown transformed evolved at all during this pandemic you've been living under a rock <laughs> that's because true that's very <laughs> true you we've all had a moment of uh, of transformation and for me that transformation was really i i knew i needed to go further and in, in more in depth in my my journey towards healing um but i actually had the opportunity um you know, during the summer of 2020. And so 2022, here we are, 2022, um, you know, I've done quite a few different programs and retreats and courses and classes, some of them fine tuning some of my own skill sets and gifts, some of them focused more on my in-depth healing and journeying and exploring you know, childhood wounds, uh, generational wounds, whatnot. Um, it's a lot of work. And, and here I am. And here I am still figuring it out, still <laughs> coming to balance. But I would say, and I've also been working with a naturopath. I want to add that there, too, because yeah. I, I still work with my doctors. They monitor me. And they support um, all of this, right? We do. I so I love my doctor. Her name's Doctor Advani. She's one of the most well-known lympho lymphologists. I mean, worldwide. She works at Stanford. Just so happened that the oncologist on hand at the hospital in 2017 happened to be buddies with her, and they went to like grad school together and everything. And he basically contacted her like, "Emergency! I need help. I have a mom on her deathbed." Da 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 da. da. And I happened to have. Because guess what? My lymphoma, super, super rare, it, it would not have been diagnosed at a different hospital, basically. And so the fact that I got to go to Stanford and I had that connection, it's just amazing. But anyway, I bring her up because she is so not the woo-woo. Like, I like to say, like, I'm, I'm all about the woo-woo. Woo-woo can work. <laughs> and she looks at me and, I mean, word for word, she has said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You talk and you listen to your body. I get it. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. <laughs> and, you know, it's not the woman. She is so beyond knowledgeable and just amazing. But she is, you know, she's not there for to, to understand aura work or chakra work or whatnot. But she's like, I don't get it, but it's working. Keep doing it. <laughs> and there, and that's basically, and then they're there to monitor sure. me. So every so many months I get an ultrasound, I get, you know, blood work and whatnot. And we make sure, you know, I would love to say I currently don't have anything. Um, I am working through a little bit of a flare up right now, um, but I'm okay. I, I have high hopes and at the end of the day, I know I will get it back under control. And if I can't, for whatever reason, I have I have my doctors and I do have the option of chemo and I do have the option of radiation. Um, it's just not the answer for me in this moment. It's and I hope it up. never is the answer for me yeah. <laughs> again. But in this moment, it is not the answer. And what the answer is, is 
I am, I am making sure to bulk up my immune system as much as possible. I take supplements. I eat nutrient dense. I, I, um, I do ginger juice shots every morning, green juice shot, lemon water, super hydration. I'm working on getting more movement in my body, um, working on more flexibility, working on doing more uh, stress relieving, been doing some tapping and, and meditation. I don't know if you guys recognize any of this, sure. but like, yeah, yeah, you know, and so I'm just really honing in on empowering my body and giving it as much, much as I possibly as you can. can. In fact, your, your yeah. quote, um, at the, what, what can others learn from you? And this is, this is important for everybody, whether you're sick or not to trust, have hope and have compassion on the self to give space for the self to journey, to explore and give light to the worlds around us that in order to heal, we must believe in ourselves, and that starts with understanding ourselves to empower the self with love, acceptance, and appreciation. Yeah. That's beautiful. Sounds like me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, what did I write? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you fuckers, da-da-da. <laughs> Mess with the wrong bitch, cancer. No, you didn't write no, that. I exactly. <laughs> Like, okay. <laughs> I, have get, I have to get my dog out, but um, if uh, uh, do you feel you have any more questions, or do you have anything more that you want to share? Yeah, what do you want to leave the listeners with? I guess. I think what I what I my biggest biggest takeaway that I would like anyone who has listened is you have the power to heal. You have the power to create your own reality. Your inner world reflects your outer world. And that does not mean things will always look how you want it to look, uh, unfold how you want it to unfold, but you do have a hand in it. Mm. And to, to embrace it with acceptance, to embrace it with love, and to embrace it with with realness, you know, and allow yourself to feel all the emotions, hold yourself um, and seek out your village, seek out your help, seek out your mentors. Cause that's a huge part of my journey that uh, I did not understand. I had no clue of any of these concepts um, uh, that I've been talking about. I, they were all introduced to me by beautiful mentors that I have met along the way and I guess just trust where your journey takes you. And if you're feeling something in your gut, listen to it. Your intuition is always right. Wow. Um, but you have the ability to heal and and to never doubt that. To never doubt that. And and it, and again, I've always been looking for that 100% clear, but I, I am here to accept that, okay, this is, this is, day by this day, is where we're at. Case, this is yeah. my mountain. And then you're yeah. not missing your life because you're willing to um, live in the gray. Yes, Not- I'm willing to live in the gray, uh-huh. and I I will be as present as possible, um, and that I'm I'm not wrong for being human when I get angry or I get frustrated or depressed. I'm not wrong for it. In fact, I'll give myself the time and I'll hold myself with love and and I'll give myself the space to have those emotions, um, you know. But. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. But you pull yourself back up again, and that's that's huge. Because yeah. you could just, you could just be yeah. like, ah, fuck it, I'm just going, like you say, under a rock, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing in life is consistent. There, you know, change is always happening. So one day it might be in the shits, the next day it might be great. You don't know. So just live presently and stick around. <laughs> stick around. <Yeah. laughs> Stick around. Thank you um, for sharing. Yeah. Like this, this has been really. I, we've talked to you before, obviously, but I think you have a really important message for people, and your story of healing is incredible. Mm-hmm. And I think people could learn from it. I mean, also, like you said, do the traditional route if that works for you better. But if this works, it's it's you know it's worth. You trying. know, I think. I, at the end of the day, I think it's the combo of both, mm-hmm. you know, it's the combo of both it, the woo woo, mm-hmm. the traditional, <laughs> you know, and at the end of the day, you, that gut 
or wherever you may feel your intuition in your heart and in, in your womb, who knows, it's different for everyone. Wherever you feel that gut feeling, listen to it. It's speaking to you for a reason. Your body is talking to you. Again, pain is the best teacher, illness the best teacher because it's some your body is saying, "Hey, I need help. I need some I need some attention here." So to really nice. tune in and to trust yourself. I think that's a good a good wrap. Good We're going to going to wrap yeah. but stick stick on the line, okay? For a little bit all after right. we stop recording so <laughs> thank you all for listening watching um we appreciate it yeah whatever <laughs> and we will see you next time yeah whatever okay <laughs> no thanks for listening thanks it's hilarious it's so funny and i'm really not but i'm having a good time with myself so that's important <laughs> that's all that matters play keep laughing keep laughing so yes, no. keep laughing keep playing keep enjoying life yep. so thank you ladies for having me yeah on and to just Ugh, ramble away yep, that's what we're all about we're good at that <laughs> or i'm good at that <laughs> so thank you for listening i'm not gonna say whatever again or whatever <laughs> <laughs> all right that's a wrap